Hey, this is Gatsmeow492, and this is going to be technical analysis for SPY for the week of March 23rd to March 28th. Uh, as always, our first step is going to be to check the news. So Yahoo Finance, great resource for this. Last week, the markets closed Friday down about negative 4.34%. It looks like the news is not good. Experts are warning of a historic collapse in economic activity. There is no slowdown of the coronavirus in sight. Italy is just getting worse. And from all the graphs I've seen, coronavirus is spreading in the United States faster than it did in Italy. So let's go through some of the news articles uh, I've been going through today. There's a jobs report uh, that the states are all kind of putting out at once this Thursday. Um, based on the unemployment claims, the jobs report will not be good at all. So forecasts for job losses uh, so far are anywhere between 500,000 and 5 million. So in the financial crisis of 2008, we saw non-farm payrolls decrease by 800,000. So, so far, uh, the job losses for the coronavirus pandemic are looking worse than the 2008 financial crisis. The total deaths in Italy so far are 4,825. Let's see, when did I update this last? Let's see if this is, oh, 5,476 now. Only 2,000 more people than that have recovered. So Italy's whole healthcare system has just become absolutely overwhelmed. Senator Ron Paul becomes the third member of Congress to test positive for COVID-19. In addition, one of Mike Pence's staff has tested positive for coronavirus. So I am expecting Monday to be a total rout, but I am waiting for futures to open before I 100% confirm. I will add the status of the futures onto the end of this video, but I figured I could go ahead and do most of the work on it right now because things do not look good at all. All right, so we have discerned that there is no positive news catalyst going on right now, so we can assume the downtrend will probably continue for Monday. Almost every Monday for the past three weeks has been read. I don't really see this Monday being significantly different. The only question now is how red? Are these kinds of negative news catalysts priced into the stock market already? Or are we going to see another a circuit breaker on Monday? All right, so let's get into the actual technical analysis here. So when we do technical analysis, we are always starting out on the longer windows and working our way down. So right here we have SPY up. Uh, we have the one week chart going to work from one week to one day to one hour and then maybe even 30 minutes. Uh, so I already have the supports plotted on here. Um, I have also listed out all the key supports on my posts on Reddit. If you want those, there will be a link in the description. Um, if you're curious about how to plot supports, I will go ahead and put a tile somewhere, maybe over here, maybe over here. Uh, for my technique in plotting supports, I use accumulated volume, which I believe to be the most effective. We're going to work with a few different indicators here. Arun, as always. Um, MACD, I've been using less, but we're still going to use MACD here. And instead of Stoke RSI, we're going to use KDJ, which is very similar, similar to Stoke RSI. I will go over it a little bit in this video. And then we are using net volume. Now, looking at the weekly, we can see that we're kind of in a range here where there's not very much support. I could not find any support or resistances between 212 and uh, I think 2, 235. So we're in, um, I'll bring it up on trading view, but when you do a, um, a volume analysis on price ranges, there is essentially no volume in this range at all historically. So what I'm expecting for this volume gap is if we get a lot of negative news, which we already have, um, I feel like we're going to see a possible gap down to 
around 215, 200, or 220 on Monday. Now, if we look at the Arun, uh, the Arun is pretty simple to read. It's great for new traders because it's very bi or binary. When this yellow line is above this blue line, uh, it's a sell signal. When the blue line is above the yellow line, it's a buy signal. The KDJ works a lot like the Stoke RSI. When it's low, it's oversold. When it's high, it's overbought. The K and the D, it looks like the K is around 26. The D is around 47.99. So not decisively oversold yet. However, the divergence between them, this little uh, purple line here actually measures the divergence between the K and the D, indicating how the rate of oversold it's getting. The rate of change is negative 15.04, so it's becoming significantly more oversold on the one week window. Um, however, it is not decisively oversold yet. We can see on the MACD, right, if you remember from my previous videos, the MACD is moving average convergence divergence. So it takes two moving averages, one with a fast period, one with a slow period, and measures the divergence or convergence between them. And you can see when these histogram bars, they get bigger, there's increasing divergence, in indicating that the momentum of the trend is increasing. So we have a downtrend on the one week and the downtrend is getting significantly worse. The net volume has kind of leveled off, which is strange. Now, I haven't really gone over this yet in any videos, but the next video I plan is to do an introduction to indicator, indicators. Um, so there's leading indicators and legging indicators. The MACD and the Arun are legging indicators mean they respond to market changes. They don't really give you an idea of what's going to happen next. The KDG and J and the net, net volume are leading indicators. The problem with leading indicators is they often give off false signals or signal noise. So you'll think something is about to happen, but it's not. But they can also act as the canary in the coal mine to your entire strategy. If something is about to change significantly, you're going to see it on net volume in KDJ long before you'll see it on the MACD or the Arun. So in this case, we actually have a little bit more buy volume according to the net volume than we did last week. So that's very interesting. That could be an indicator that there's an upcoming bull trap. Uh, I think the long-term downward trend is going to continue. So far, the market is down about 32% from its peak and I think it could potentially get worse than that, considering we're just, according to most epidemiologists and virologists and articles I've read, um, America is just getting its toes wet as far as uh, the coronavirus pandemic goes. All right, so anyways, let's move on to the daily. So the daily is roughly the same story as the weekly. The Arun is signaling sell, the MACD is still sell, except for there's a little bit less divergence between the two moving averages. It's starting to confirm a little, or um, converge a little bit. And the KDJ is really, really convergent, which is weird. The net volume is still pretty down, but it's down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So that doesn't really tell us all that much. That's kind of a neutral signal. Just a second ago, I said on the weekly, the net volume might be indicating upcoming bull trap. Well, it looks like the convergence on the MACD on the one day is starting to look like it too, as well as the convergence on the KDJ. Normally we don't get quite this oversold and then have this convergence in the KDJ without some kind of reversal. Like I said, it doesn't always happen. The KDJ is a leading indicator, so it is subject to a lot of signal noise and a lot of false signals. So this could very well be a false signal. Um, I think that's 100% possible, but this is our canary in the coal mine. I think we might see good entries for short and put positions later this week. And I don't wanna get stuck holding a put or a short position in a bull trap. That just 
puts us in a position where we're making difficult decisions, where if we properly manage our stops and identify long-term trends and short-term trends properly, we end up in a position where we are making difficult decisions we shouldn't have had to if we were being diligent. So let's move on to the one hour. The one hour of rune is still pretty significantly giving a sell signal. The KDJ on the one hour rune is pretty convergent and it has been convergent till the end of the, for the last few days, it looks like. Yeah, so this is also, this is kind of agreeing with the one day KDJ, which makes me slightly more confident we're gonna see a bull trap. The MACD also converging just a little bit. The net volume is almost neutral. It's negative 160K, but that's significantly higher than it has been for the last few trading days. So and that's pretty interesting. Not that this hasn't happened before. If there is a big enough news catalyst, negative news catalyst, which there have been some pretty huge negative news catalysts, we, we could see a plunge to like 200 still. I wouldn't say that's outside of the realm of possibility. However, I am being a little bit more careful with my short and put positions. I think the warning signs are here enough to justify being slightly more careful. Yeah, all right. I think that's about it for the technical analysis portion. Big supports to watch out for are 211 and 200. If we do see a downtrend like I think we will Monday, those are great take profit targets for your shorts and your puts. The big resistances here are 235, 250, 260. So if there is a bull trap, like I think there will be, I'll probably be looking for an entry for a short put position Somewhere, maybe I'll do a small entry at 243 and then a larger entry between 250 and 260 somewhere. Uh, I am overall convinced that this downtrend will continue. I see no reason why it wouldn't in the long term, but uh, markets retrace. It might be the only law of technical analysis. The last thing I wanted to go over here is a model I made on trading view using the vpvr technical indicator it really just plots the supports alongside uh, the chart as price levels as opposed to just having them along the bottom so it's a lot more informative as to which price levels people are most interested in buying or selling at if you look at this chart we are in an area where there is almost no interest in buying or selling at this price level now, because we are in a darn trend, there will obviously be far more interest in selling. So what that tells me is that historically, nobody has bought in these price levels at all. It could just be because SPY was so on the rise here. But how I interpret that is that there is not a lot of support. This is part of the reason why I'm expecting a gap down and why I'm looking for exits around between 215 and 219. If you look after this gap down, this volume gap right here, all of a sudden we run into an area of really high volume where people are interested in buying and there has been reversals before and that's just under 216. So I don't know, it could fall beneath that. If it does fall beneath that, there's a more minor support around 200 and then after that we have another volume gap. So it's almost like it has to stop here. Otherwise, there's just nothing supporting it. Like the floor is just gone. Uh, you can see particularly here between 170 and 180, there, there's almost no volume at all. There's no support whatsoever. So right around here is the danger zone for the market, and we are officially in the danger zone. So the last piece of this puzzle, which I promised you I'd get back to, was futures. And it looks like within 20 minutes of opening, futures are limit down. So uh, expect a pretty bloody Monday. That's it for the week of March 23rd. Still on our way down, but be vigilant and don't get stuck short in a bull trap. 
There may be good put entries in the next two weeks around 250, so be patient. If you wanna use the same platform I do to trade, look in the description down below for a Webull referral link, as well as a link to my Twitter where I post my TA first. Like and subscribe if you're feeling cool, and thanks for watching.